So over the weekend, Donald Trump signed into law an executive order called Protecting the Nation from Foreign Terrorist Entry into the United States. That's since been called the Muslim Ban. What is it? Basically, it's a, a law that has no input from Congress. It was effective pretty much immediately, stopping nationals from seven primarily Muslim countries, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Sudan, Somalia, Libya, from going into the US for the next 90 days, the next three months, even if they have green cards, even if they have the right to work, they have tourist visas, they can't enter or re-enter the United States. Now, initially, that didn't just apply to the people from those countries, but also dual nationals. So Mo Farah, who's British but was born in Somalia, wouldn't have been able to enter. Uh, Luol Deng, people from those countries, but also from, say, France or Britain. If you were born in those countries, had a passport from those countries, you couldn't enter the US. Fact. We've since found out that actually nationals from Canada, Britain, Australia, New Zealand can go into the US, even if they were born in these seven countries. That's what white nationalism looks like. Now, given the title of this executive order, okay, we would think this is about terrorism. That's what it's called, right? Stopping foreign terrorists entering into the United States. Yet, uh, none of the seven countries covered by it were involved, for instance, in 9-11. There were no Iranians or Iraqis or Syrians involved in 9-11. 15 of the 9-11 attackers were Saudis. Uh, it doesn't cover countries like the UAE or Egypt. Now, I don't want countries like the UAE or Egypt or Saudi to be included, but the point is clearly it has nothing to do with terrorism when it's not covering the countries which have been involved in terrorist attacks on the US mainland. Furthermore, none of the countries where Donald Trump has business interests are covered. So he has extensive business interests in UAE, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, uh, in Turkey. None of them are covered. He doesn't have interests in Iraq, in Syria, in Iran, in Somalia, in Sudan. So it's a very, very weird uh, synthesis of his business interests and a bunch of countries which don't really have a recorded kind of history of terrorist attacks in the US. Iran. There's no single documented incident of an Iranian committing a terrorist attack in the US. So why has this happened? If it's not about beating terrorism, if it so easily slides over Trump's business interests, why are we seeing this? Well, the man behind it, the mastermind behind it, is a gentleman called Steve Bannon. He joined the National Security Council over the weekend. That's the biggest body in terms of making uh, US foreign policy. Where's he come from? Well, I did a video towards the end of last year, didn't I, in November? saying that he's a fascist. He is. He has a recorded history of ethno-nationalism, white supremacism, white nationalism. Awful, awful guy. He represents all the worst tendencies in the Donald Trump administration. And what's more, he seems to be the number one, the head honcho, the guru, the voice above all voices when it comes not just to foreign policy, but now we're seeing with immigration. And of course, Theresa May was the first foreign leader to visit Donald Trump at the White House since he was inaugurated in January, since he became the president. Unsurprisingly, she didn't call him out on a presidential election campaign which reflected the worst sentiments in America, xenophobic, racist. She didn't call him out on his history of sexist language and actions towards women, denigrating women constantly. She didn't do much, right? Criticizing a guy who's not really a normal politician. This is really new with Trump. We know where he's coming from. What she did talk about, special relationship, increased trade, and of course, a state visit by Trump to the UK later on this year. Over the weekend, Jeremy Corbyn, big JC, called him out, said if you stand neutral in the situation of the oppressor and the oppressed, you side with the oppressor. And we had a petition of 1.5 million people calling on the government to not allow Donald Trump to visit the UK later this year, to essentially disinvite him from a state visit. Now, in the last couple of days, Theresa May has said, we're not going back. DJT, Donald Trump, at real Donald Trump, is definitely gonna come over here and there's nothing you can do about it. Boris Johnson, that idiot loaf of bread Muppet, said that uh, Trump's bark was far worse than his bite. Well, the guy just signed an executive order without any input from Congress. That is the definition of a bite, okay? It's pretty hard when he's the President of the United States, the most powerful individual in the world. So they're not going back. They're not rowing back on this. And there's a reason why. It's because Donald Trump, in his deeds, reflects the politics of Theresa May. What she would like to do, he's just done. In 2015, one of her first acts as Tory party leader and prime minister, she said that immigration made it impossible to build a cohesive society. Under her watch as Home Secretary between 2009 and 2015, the number of EU nationals arrested under immigration powers went by 500%. She was the mastermind behind the racist van, you remember that? Telling undocumented migrants to hand themselves in or go home. 
Now that was just a pilot, that was meant to go national. You know why it didn't? Because the Advertising Standards Agency banned it. They banned it. What else did she do? Well, she increased the threshold for non-EU nationals working here to £35,000. You had to earn £35,000. If you didn't, you had to leave. Okay, so people working here already, building lives here already, maybe in love, wanting to stay here, had to suddenly go because she decided to arbitrarily increase the threshold to £35,000. Perhaps worst of all, after a, a wide-ranging set of abuses that were documented at Yarlswood Immigration Detention Centre, she denied access to the UN Special Rapporteur on Women's Rights. They couldn't go to Yarlswood to document what was going on independently. So it's clear that Theresa May doesn't give a shit about migrants, whether they're documented or undocumented, whether they're EU or non-EU. Uh, she has a history as Home Secretary and now as Prime Minister of reprehensible politics, which I think mirror, mirror 100% the very worst things that we've seen from Donald Trump over the last month. So what do we do? Well, we need to make sure that this inevitable state visit by Donald Trump this year, later this year, is met by a huge protest. Tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people. We need to ensure that it's politically indefensible to back the guy. That applies to a regular person on the street, but also the likes of Nigel Farage, Theresa May and Boris Johnson. But of course, that's months away. So in the meantime, we need to bridge the major issues that now affect the US with those in the UK. Because if you aren't happy with Donald Trump, if you think the Muslim ban is disgusting, what do you make of Prevent? If you think that the US is slipping down a dangerous path on a right-wing trajectory, what do you think of a Prime Minister who said that immigration was no basis for a cohesive society? If you think that America is undermining all that is good about it and its people, then what do you make of a Britain where vans go around telling people to go home? The truth is this, Theresa May would love to do what Donald Trump is doing right now. We draw a line in the sand and we say, you pick a side. That's what Trump wants us to do. That's the whole point of this legislation. If you decide to stay neutral between oppressor and oppressed, you do side with the oppressor. So make a decision, stand with the right side and call Theresa May, Boris Johnson, Nigel Farage, exactly what they are, racist pieces of shit.